Part One of Nocturne of Remembered Spring and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Nocturne of Remembered Spring and Other Poems by Conrad Aiken. Part One. Nocturne of Remembered Spring section one moonlight silvers the ghostly tops of trees moonlight whitens the lilac shadowed wall and through the soft starred evening fall clearly as if through enchanted seas footsteps passing an infinite distance away in another world and another day moonlight turns the purple lilacs to blue moonlight leaves the fountain hoar and old moonlight whitens the sleepy dew and the boughs of elms grow green and cold our footsteps echo on gleaming stones the leaves are stirred to a jargon of muted tones this is the night we have kept you say this is the moonlight night that never will die let us return there let us return you and i through the gray streets our memories retain let us go back again section two mist goes up from the river to dim the stars the river is black and cold so let us dance to a tremor of violins and troubled guitars and flare of horns and clang of cymbals and drums and strew the glimmering floor with petals of roses and remember while rich music yawns and closes with a luxury of pain how silence comes yes we have loved each other long ago we moved like wind to a music's ebb and flow at a phrase from the violins you closed your eyes and smiled and let me lead you how young we were waves of music beneath us dizzied to rise your hair upon that music seemed to stir let us return there let us return you and i through changeless streets our memories retain let us go back again section three mist goes up from the rain-steeped earth and clings ghostly with lamplight among drenched maple trees we walk in silence and see how the lamplight flings fans of shadow upon it the music's mournful pleas die out behind us the door is closed at last a net of silver silence is softly cast over our dreams slowly and softly we walk quietly with delicious pause we talk of foolish trivial things of life and death time and forgetfulness and dust and truth lilacs and youth you laugh i hear the after taken breath you darken your eyes and turn away your head at something i have said some tremulous intuition that flew too deep and struck a plangent chord to-night to-night you will remember it as you fall asleep your dream will suddenly blossom with sharp delight good night you say the leaves of the lilac softly dip and sway the purple spikes of bloom nod their sweetness upon us and lift again your white face turns away i am caught with pain and silence descends and the dripping of dew from the eaves and jewelled points of leaves section four i walk in a pleasure of sorrow along the street and try to remember you the slow drops patter the mist upon the lilacs has made them sweet i brush them with my sleeve the cool drops scatter and suddenly i laugh and stand and listen as if another had laughed a fragrant gust rustles the laden leaves the wet spikes glisten a shower of drops goes down on stones and dust and it seems as though it were you who had shaken the bough and spilled the fragrance i pursue your face again it grows more vague and lovely it eludes me now i remember that you are gone and drown in pain something there was i said to you i recall something just as the music seemed to fall that made you laugh and burns me still with pleasure what were the words the words like dripping fire i remember them now and smile and in sweet leisure rehearse the scene more exquisite than before and you more beautiful and i more wise lilacs and spring and night and your clear eyes and you in white by the darkness of a door 
these things like voices weaving to richest music flow and fall in the cool night of my mind i pursue your ghost among green leaves that are ghostly i pursue you but cannot find and suddenly with a pang that is sweetest of all i become aware that i cannot remember you the beautiful ghost i knew has silently plunged in the shadows shadows that stream and fall section five let us go in and dance once more on the dream's glimmering floor beneath the balcony festooned with roses let us go in and dance once more the door behind us closes against an evening purple with stars and mist let us go in and keep our tryst with music and white roses and spin around in lazy swirls of sound do you foresee me married and grown old and you who smile about you at this room dizzy with whirling dancers is it foretold that you must step from tumult into a gloom forget me love another grow white and cold no you are cleopatra fiercely young laughing upon the topmost stair of night roses upon the desert must be flung it is your wish above us light by light weaves the delirious darkness petals fall they fall upon your jewelled hands they tremble upon your hair and music breaks in waves on the pillared wall and you are cleopatra and do not care and so in memory you will always be young and foolish a thing of dream and mist and so perhaps when all is disillusioned and eternal spring returns once more bringing a ghost of lovelier springs remembered you will remember me section six yet when we meet we seem in silence to say pretending serene forgetfulness of our youth do you remember but then why should you remember do you remember a certain day or evening rather spring evening long ago we talked of death and love and time and truth and said such wise things things that amused us so how foolish we were who thought ourselves so wise and then we laugh with shadows in our eyes End of part one recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two of Nocturne of Remembered Spring and Other Poems by Conrad Aiken. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two Meditation on a June Evening section one as evening comes my thoughts turn back to you darkness is slanting through the eastern streets the lamps are waiting the wry-faced moon repeats her vain nocturnal pose the lovers loiter to choose their favorite seats across the lamp-lit grass a paper blows my thoughts turn back to you like tired music in a tired brain seeking solution in the worn refrain it returns it returns it climbs and falls struggles disintegrates is querulous resentful states restates but always like one haunted comes again to that one phrase of pain and that one phrase you know as well as i is the remembered pallor of your face and a certain silence and a certain sky and a certain place why must he say these things he was at fault he misconceived me as well he knows if he would only be silent and let things rest if he could only see how slight it is the foolish boy and everything for the best i know you'll say to think these things is useless but music then is useless too music persuades and captures the subtlest air as evening comes my thoughts turn back to you perhaps i misconceived you you did not know how could you know for none had ever told you that if you laughed or looked in such a way letting the deep scene challenge play a shade too long letting it linger so like a glimpse of sky between the clouds you did not know we'll say that i should misinterpret this believe more meant than was intended you did not know that i would be so conscious of these things so desperately conscious like one who clings to the merest shade of meaning shadow of tone and of course you would not wilfully deceive section two 
You're leaning, I'll suppose, out of your window. I, watching that moon swimming above the rooftops, slipping through restless boughs of trees. You smile a little, as I have often seen you. Smiling because you know how nights like these, with all that's sorrowful in them and spacious and gay, are foolish ripples which time will smooth away. Your smile is bitter. I have tasted it. It is the smile of one who secretly cries. I, yes, I remember it now. It is exquisite. A passionate plea for all that dies, twisted to irony, tortured to silent pain. You would like this night to come again. You would like to hear this music played once more, I to tease the secret out of a certain refrain, to snare it among the outspread nerves and see what was its pleasure. And that refrain meant me? We have walked together against the evening sun, weaving with words a music for the flesh. Your eyes deny me. That episode is done. Section 3 I could indict you, O, oh, on many counts, to watch the sunlit shallows of your eyes, darken and deepen with surprise. Raindrops falling on water are ringed with ripples. Each perfect ring dilates and dies. And so, though I might prove my charge against you, my words would die upon you like drops of rain. You would as sweetly mirror the sky again. It is no use to close my eyes and say on such and such a day, reading from such a book on such a page, smiling you leaned, and let your body rest trembling on mine, leaning your breath softly against my arm, until my veins cried out with music, it is no use, no use, to say you could not know, you could not guess that brush of your hand against my hand, touch of your dress. Or dark eyes peering closely to understand, or idle question pitched in intimate tone, it is no use to say, if you had known what death was in these things, I should have not been spun in music, or caught to stare and question, and riddle the whole to naught. Why do I say these words? You do not hear them like ghosts of remembered music they rise unsought poor boy he was so nice about it too so sweet and foolish i'm sorry it should be so but what can a woman do you tell me you are sorry and as you say it your caught voice breaks you turn away from me but not too soon for me to see one instant in your eyes far snow peaks melting under sunny skies you tear a leaf turn back to me and smile remembering our youth but this was strange this quiet change and as we talk striving to seem at ease to ignore the ghost of love that walks between us each little while that look returns i am like one who sees a face somehow familiar somehow strange glimpsed in a crowd who does not know if it were seen before or only dreamed or who it is does pity tremble so or was it after all what all these musings have sought like restless music to approach regret and self-reproach and if it were this if it were really true that you had teased your body with my presence played upon me that you might thereby play deep music on yourself is this too late to say is there still time could i yet capture you would you admit you loved me if you knew was it a sign that i might yet demand where asking was in vain these things are difficult to understand this may be real or a grotesque in my brain a grain of sand may seem a desert stared at long enough eyes too intent see blots and parallels tremendous heavens peal in a scale of laughter a sidelong smile divulges smoking hells section four it is strange when all is done when all our talk is done that of all these years only such trivial things should so live on these foolish trivial themes persisting and persisting like the inconsequent words we say in dreams we sit at tea a gesture of your hand touches your throat light gleams across your eyes in casual intimate tone i hear you say how odd that you should think to come to-day what prompted it i wonder the words return foolish indeed but old with mystery precious because in spite of all they live and have some secret of you yet to give it is as if i visited once more a house i lived in once now tenantless 
or walked in a glare of noon along a shore where as a boy i played the rippled sands pebbles wet with the tide old grey boards the purple vetch that crawls among dry matted weeds and shells and grass bottles and crooked sticks and broken glass beech plums and tumbled walls they are like ghosts returned by light of day i stare at them i touch them with my hands and listen to learn what secret it is they say and i remember on a certain night it was raining we heard the sound of rain and some one some neighbour was playing a violin playing the same thing over and over and over remote uneasy like one who tries to explain playing it into the flesh playing it into the brain why do these phantom hands these faces rise soon as i close my eyes i turn but cannot escape they follow me they beckon to me the sad mouths open to speak the sad procession passes changelessly some one some neighbour was playing a violin playing the same tune over and over and over will the quiet never begin section five the wry-faced moon goes leering up the sky the roofs are shiny the fountain shoots and falls against the stars ringed with a ring of foam the stars are tittering in the skies inquisitive trees lean over the ghostly walls glistening leaves like eyes fasten upon me to ask their ceaseless question my thoughts turn back to you like tired music in a tired brain seeking solution in the worn refrain it returns it returns climbs and falls struggles disintegrates is querulous resentful states restates but always like one haunted comes again to that one phrase of pain and that one phrase you know as well as i is the remembered beauty of your face and a certain silence and a certain sky and a certain place end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine chapter three of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three discord the hurdy-gurdy sings in the golden morning in the hazy morning it sings to the budding trees and creeps away children take hands and play sparrows whirr upward from the dusty street but all that the music seems somehow to say is death is hiding among the cherry blossoms the eyes of death look out through cherry blossoms death's hand is on the bough and makes it sweet in the quiet of morning the silver music plays among the trees it dances over the sunlit stones it is blown like rain it is silent it sings again it is scattered and spilled like petals upon a breeze the sunlight swirls and shatters in broad cascades but somehow all the music seems to sing a sinister thing that death is moving among the cool white blossoms peering out through the blossoms with yellow eyes that the shadow of death is blue in the golden sunlight blue in the sun it lies over the cold fields and the cold new grass cloud shadows silently blow and pass and the shadows of clouds are blue of changing shape shadows of trees are huddled by gusty wind they crouch they hurry they whirl they half escape and as the music stealing down cold air creeps to the heart again to whisper a suddenly flowering pain the lover leans to her lover and over his eyes sees something pass something remote and blue like a cold cloud silently blowing across cold skies and the music rising on air so slowly to drift away like one grown tired at length desiring rest seems only to say blue death is hiding among the cherry blossoms parting the blossoms with white and silent hands to look at the world and smile and creep away the snowdrops shake their bells against the grass the yellow crocus quivers and then is still but it is not the breeze that sets them nodding not the wind that makes them spill the gliding silver raindrop in the sun it was the green and purple sinuous one it was the one with small red upward eyes slowly breathing among the leaves he lies 
slowly pushing against the delicate stems drawing his silvered coils through tremulous clover and cinquefoils what was the echo heard then as we fled what was it the music said something about a ghost that smiled through flowers a ghost who chilled us a ghost of icy music and cherry blossoms crowding to hide the dead end of part three recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four nineteen fifteen the trenches section one all night long it has seemed for many years we have heard the terrible sound of guns all night long we have lain and watched the calm stars we cannot sleep though we are tired the sound of guns is in our ears we are growing old and gray we have forgotten many simple things is this you is this i will the word come to charge to-day all night long all night long we listen and cannot close our eyes we see the ring of violet flashes endlessly darting against the skies we feel the firm earth shake beneath us and all the world we have walked upon crumbles to nothing crumbles to chaos crumbles to incoherent dust till it seems we can never walk again that it is foolish to have feet foolish to be men foolish to think foolish to have such brains and useless to remember the world we came from the world we never shall see again all night long we lie this way we cannot talk i look to see what you are thinking and you and you we were all thinking will it come to-day get your bayonets ready then see that they are sharp and bright see that they have thirsty edges remember that we are savage men motherless men who have no past nothing of beauty to call to mind no tenderness to stay our hands we are tired we have thought all this before we have seen it all and thought it all our thumbs are calloused with feeling the bayonet's edge we have known it all and felt it all till we can know no more section two all night long we lie stupidly watching the smoke puff over the sky stupidly watching the interminable stars come out again peaceful and cold and high swim into the smoke again or melt in a flare of red all night long all night long hearing the terrible battle of guns we smoke our pipes we think we shall soon be dead we sleep for a second and wake again we dream we are filling pans and baking bread or hoeing the witch-grass out of the wheat we dream we are turning lathes or open our shops in the early morning and look for a moment along the quiet street and we do not laugh though it is strange in a harrowing second of time to traverse so many worlds so many ages and come to this chaos again this vast symphonic dance of death this incoherent dust section three we are growing old we are older than the stars you whom i knew a moment ago have walked through ages of silence since then memory is forsaking me i no longer know if we are one or two or the blades of grass all night long lying together we think in caverns of dreadful sound we grope among falling boulders we are overtaken and crushed we rise once more performing wearily the senseless things we have performed so often before yesterday is coming again yesterday and the day before and a million others all alike one by one sulphurous clouds and a red sun sulphurous clouds and a yellow moon and a cold drizzle of endless rain driving across them wetting the barrels of guns dripping soaking pattering slipping chilling our hands numbing our feet glistening on our chins and then all over again after grey ages sulphurous clouds and a red sun sulphurous clouds and a yellow moon i had my childhood once now i have children a boy who is learning to read a girl who is learning to sew and my wife has brown hair and blue eyes our parapet is blown away blown away by a gust of sound 
dust is falling upon us blood is dripping upon us we are standing somewhere between earth and stars not knowing if we are alive or dead all night long it is so all night long we hear the guns and do not know if the word will come to charge today it will be like that other charge we will climb out and run yelling like madmen in the sun running stiffly on the scorched dust hardly hearing our voices running after the man who points with his hand at a certain shattered tree running through sheets of fire like idiots sometimes falling sometimes rising i will not remember then how i walked by a hedge of wild roses and shook the dew off with my sleeve i will not remember the shape of my sweetheart's mouth but with other things ringing like anvils in my brain i will run i will die i will forget i will hear nothing and forget i will remember that we are savage men motherless men who have no past nothing of beauty to call to mind no tenderness to stay our hands section five we are tired we have thought all this before we have seen it all and thought it all we have tried to forget we have tried to change we have struggled to climb an invisible wall but if we should climb it could we ever return we have known it all and felt it all till we can know no more let us climb out and end it then lest it become immortal let us climb out and end it then just for the change this is the same night still and you and i struggling to keep our feet in a chaos of sound and the same puff of smoke passes to leave the same stars in the sky section six out there in the moonlight how still in the grass they lie those who panted beside us or stumbled before us those who yelled like madmen and ran at the sun flinging their guns before them one of them stares all day at the sky as if he had seen some strange thing there one of them tightly holds his gun as if he dreaded a danger there one of them stoops above his friend by moon and sun we see him there one of them saw white cottage walls with purple clematis flowers and leaves and heard through trees his waterfalls and whistled under the eaves one of them walked on yellow sand and watched a young girl gathering shells once a white wave caught her hand one of them heard how certain bells chimed in a valley mellow and slow just as he turned to go section seven all night long all night long we see them and do not remember them we hear the terrible sounds of guns we see the white rays darting and darting we are beaten down and crawl to our feet we wipe the dirt from mouths and eyes dust-coloured animals creeping in dust animals stupefied by sound we are beaten down and some of us rise and some become a part of the ground but what do we care we never knew them or if we did it was long ago night will end in a year or so we look at each other as if to say across the void of time between us will the word come today End of part four. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part five of Nocturne of Remembered Spring and Other Poems by Conrad Aiken. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part five. Sonata in Pathos section one well i am tired tired of all these years the hazy mornings the noons the misty evenings tired of the spring tired of the fall the music starts again i have heard it all i cannot escape it whispers in my ears i have pursued you in so many places in a thousand times with a thousand wistful faces i have pursued you so many times in vain wherever i turn you rise in the shadows again wherever i turn you are smiling there touching the one white rose that stars your hair why do you follow me why do you seek me why do you rouse strange music in my heart you laugh and enter the shadows and change once more you step transformed from a lamplit door you touch my arm and silently vanish away why do you never stay only this afternoon this rainy afternoon there in the darkness where i listened to music 
you came and sat beside me with golden hair were you the music itself come to betray me for the music stopped and you were no longer there and i sought in the darkness for you and touched but darkness reached out my hands and touched but air and suddenly in the evening you came again sombre in silver rain and drew the darkness about you and the gleam of lights where have you gone through what succession of nights must i pursue you from place to place and face to face you are like music forever moving and changing forever weaving a lovelier melody you are like music weaving and interweaving you plead and sing but will not wait for me i have touched the moonlight whiteness of your hands i have walked with you by the moonlight sea we have sat and watched the waves slide up white sands the waves that whispered at you and me and the dark hair the blue black hair like midnight and the soft bright golden hair and the hair that ripples like sun on moving water and the hair that is lighter than melody on soft air i have known and touched them all i have loved them all i have played a ghostly music upon them i have played a starlight magic upon them and held them and let them fall you the white-breasted one who danced before me bearing narcissus in your hands you with the mouth like jasper you with the feet like snow i have loved you all i have loved you long ago but you have faded before me and left me nothing and the caress of hands the lips the sighs the starless night of darkened eyes white throats that filled with laughter they have perished like music that leaves no echo after i cannot remember the softness of a kiss the fleeting warmth of a breath the evening falls and brings me only this the melancholy of some forgotten death section two the naked elms that lift their writhing branches in sinister patterns against the twilight sky they are monstrous corals in the coldness of an ocean and beneath them strange things creep and die i am tired i have come a long way from the sun i have forgotten the wind on hills of blue i walk in the twilight under strange black branches and try in vain to remember a face i knew my soul is green with cold sea slime the slime of graceless lusts and awkward loves i would like to climb these frozen corals climb to the shining waves where a bright wind moves i would like to climb these cold black boughs and see a star above the waters but can that be you who have sought me whom i have sought so often come down to me i would like to rise to a room where yellow candles shine in a golden row i would like to sit with you and hear soft music intensely and persuasively flow i would like to hear you talking of simple things of the leaves that hang on trees and softly fall i would like to have your hands touch mine like wings and see your face so white and young and fragile against the golden darkness of a wall section three this is the picture of you who died so young you whose dreams were the quietness of music whose life was of music abruptly brought to an end i hold the candle above you and search the shadows you would have been my friend my more than friend i never saw you but holding the candle above you striving to find the secret that lights your face something some music comes over me and i love you i desire to touch you i desire to change this place from a room with candles and a faded picture to a room with you a living music there you with the dark strange eyes and sombre depth of hair you the clear browed what are you wondering of that gives your innocent eyes the dusk of love what is the music dreaming behind your mouth your lips are closed for a moment you hold your breath waiting for your first kiss the mouth of death and your young body your young white body is dead and covered with earth and turned to leaves and fallen to earth again and the music you dreamed is gone and your swift steps are gone and the wind blows over you in the ghostly rain i will walk where you have walked and think of you and search on the earth for the music that you knew yes you are one more whom i have sought in vain one who has beckoned to me and vanished away one who has gone and will not come again one who came but would not stay why must the music move why will it never rest 
Why will it never meet me breast to breast? Perhaps it is death alone whom I shall love, Death alone who will cling to me, never to let me move. Section 4 Slow steps pass in the evening, Slow steps echo and pass, Like my own steps returning from other years. It is I, perhaps, pursuing the ghost of a dream, A dream that will end in a laugh or a dazzle of tears. I would like to cry, come back, but the steps are gone. My ghost pursues its ghostly end. It will pursue till the ghost is lost in the dawn. It will pursue and dream till the stars ascend, and the steps are woven gorgeously into a music, a slow reverberant monotone. I am weighed upon like one in a horrible fever. I bear the weight of the stars alone, and I must resurrect my dreams again resurrect them all endure them like a tyrannous refrain obedient to their measures rise and fall i have touched the moonlight whiteness of your hands and walked with you by a moonlight sea we have sat and watched the waves slide up white sands the waves that whispered to you and me and the dark hair the blue-black hair like midnight and the soft bright golden hair and the hair that ripples like sun on moving waters and the hair that is lighter than melody on soft air. I have known and touched them all, I have loved them all, I have played a ghostly music upon them, I have played a starlight music upon them, and held them and let them fall. Yet there are none who love me, and none I love, and the mornings pass, and the noons, and the evenings die, and I walk under freezing elms whose branches writhe like tortured corals against a clear green sky and those who call me i follow and those who leave me i shall remember till i die end of part five recording by expatriate in bangor maine part six of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part 6. White Nocturne. Section 1. The first soft snowflakes hovering down the night, From one white cloud that hurries beneath the stars, Whispering over the black unfrozen pool, Silently falling on withered leaves, Eddying slowly among bare boughs of trees. The music you are to me is as ghostly as these, softly falling softly passing wandering slowly on dreamless air the first soft snowflakes slanting down this night melt on the lifted palms of your hands or in the fragrant darkness of your hair one of them finds your lip and you quietly laugh a laugh that means to say this was the kiss you gave me yesterday or the ghost of it ah yes the ghost of it for the ghost of it is all we have to-day the first slow snowflakes pass leaving a sprinkled whiteness on leaves and grass. The cloud whirls ghost-like against the cold bright stars, over the long black boughs that seem to reach forlornly after it. And now it is gone, and suddenly we seem to walk in silence where before we walked in speech. But the silence itself is exquisite, like a pause in music, ghostly with overtones. In silent we seem to hear the echoes of words we spoke and heard last year. Clearly our footsteps sound on the moistened stones. Clearly the lamp-lit hill street gleams before us. And silently we climb, climbing our tragic destiny together, from lamp to lamp up the bright street of time. Section 2 You sit beneath the lamp and talk to me. With dark hair somehow turn to fire, your white hands lie in your lap or touch your lips, and your talk like music weaving intricately, plays upon me it is a magic of white touching and changing all familiar things it flows in the windy night it quietly opens secret doors it sings it returns upon itself repeats denies or takes sweet pleasure in silence and all the while you sit beneath the lamp and smile or turn away your eyes we remember you seem to say choosing strange words to say it in another way how slowly and how inevitably we change how what was then familiar now grows strange white valleys fall between us your words become a wind and heavily blow 
we seemed to be crying across a chasm of snow trying to hear the half-remembered words trying to guess what we no longer know yes life changes we are never the same your eyes grow dark with a tiny flame you say the words and wait and a sudden terror seizes me for i fear that you have divined the things that i have forgotten things that still shine before you white and clear yes it is strange you sigh your talk flows on you touch your hair with your hands and sigh and suddenly then it seems to me that this word this word so quietly said was a terrible cry and i am confused i desire to touch your hand but again white chasms open the night flows chill and something freezes within me and i am still section three the snowflakes tick the frosted window-pane the night is mad with the senseless dance of flakes the coal-fire sinks and shakes and i wait by the window and look along the street to where in the snow beneath a lamp a man and a woman stand he is leaning close to her face he takes her hand he pleads with her she tries to turn away what is it he leans to say what is the savage music he plays upon her what chords profound with memories he takes her in his arms and she is his she lifts her face in the sombre light and together slowly they walk away whirled about by the mad dance of snow down the white silent street from lamp to lamp they go into the immortal night where have they gone where will the white streets lead them to what tempestuous or ignoble end to what faint peace or dazzling pain the snowflakes whirl and madden my brain they whirl in patterns before my eyes and i see them at last in a small and sombre room in the yellow lamplight i see them rise she smiles and lifts white hands to touch her hair and he waits wearily in the eternal chair section four i would like to touch this snow with the wind a dream with a sudden warmth of music and turn it all to petals of roses why is it that i recall your two pale hands holding a bowl of roses wide open like lotus flowers floating in water i would like to touch this snow with the wind of a dream to hold the world in my hands and let it fall we have walked together through snow for a long long way we have walked among the hills immortally white golden by noon and blue by night i would like to touch this snow with the wind of a dream and hear you singing again by a starlight wall section five you talk to me what is it that you are saying april april the soft sun falls between the deep white chasm the gorge of the frozen river flashes with white and green and we are walking there by the blue river by the blue river scaled with golden fire our feet move pace for pace through the tall grasses and the earth is light with desire youth youth so sing we for a space and darkness comes over your face a great cloud crosses the golden sky wind shakes the leaves you fall in the grass and cry crying silently hiding your face with your hands youth youth so sing we for a space and you are crying i know because this day this youth this beauty must go go down into the dust the golden river is dark with a sudden gust the green of the willows is ruffled grey a great cloud crosses the sky wind shakes the leaves you fall in the grass and cry youth april we clamour to them to stay and a shadow is on us for we know that love must die and rising then we see white peaks in the distance white peaks quiet peace eternity section six do you remember you who smile at me under this lamp here in this world of snow do you remember long ago what was i going to tell you what was my dream to be it does not matter for all we need to say to strike our hearts to a bitter chorded music is do you remember on a certain day and all the years fall down from us like leaves and all this sinister world is blown away take my hand and dream of youth once more take my arm and let us walk on the wet flagstones gleaming yellow with lamps and along the sea furled shore or up a certain flight of marble stairs resting our hands on the green-veined balustrade 
and into a room where a low-toned waltz is played and women rise from gilded chairs ah this has been a golden day you lean and say a day like music of strange rich involutions swift and profound and huddled and sweet the wind of it blows even into this room there is a hint of forests in this rich gloom you smile your eyes intensely darken at mine i feel the music about us heavily beat waver and vanish and shine one white rose with a golden heart held in the cup of your hand Today I muse all things will find solution. The universe is simple to understand. Take my arm and let us drift, like leaves when the wind is driven, for the day soon ends. It is strange how such a day with such a music and one white rose will make friends more than friends. Section 7. White hours like snow, white hours like eternal snow, long white streets jeweled with lights our steps are muffled and silent we scarcely know how swiftly we cross the nights i would like to touch this snow with the fire of a dream with the mouth of a dream and turn it all to petals of roses i would like to touch you too and change you into the chord of music i knew can you not change run back again to april laugh out at me from among young lilac leaves play with your jewels and sing feeling the earth beneath you float with spring you talk in an even tone i answer you and all about us seems to say peace peace the hills and streets are cold you are growing old section eight yes we have changed slowly and silently changed we are the hungry ghosts of the selves we knew we sit on each other's tombs and stare at death we are not lovely we scarcely believe it true and only then with a pang that is almost a cry that once long ago we were the i and the you who shivered in music under an april sky white night of snow and a thousand nights like this snow on our lips like the ghost of a kiss and a thousand nights in a hollow second of time we will return again silently or with trivial speech to climb from lamp to lamp up the white street of pain yet is it better you say painfully turning your darkened eyes away to lend our souls to a quieter music at last remembering when we will the sudden and gorgeous clashings of the past snow falls about us the hills immortally white wait far off in the undisturbing night end of part six recording by expatriate in bangor maine Part seven of Nocturne of Remembered Spring and Other Poems by Conrad Aiken. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part seven Nocturne in a Minor Key. Section one. I will say I walked alone in whistling darkness, or heard a rush of rain through windless air, or stood in dust with yellow leaves around me or dreamed i saw a sea-maid comb her hair but why recite these things you will not hear me or if you heard me would not care i will say i saw a seagull crossing water or suddenly in the midnight heard a cry or woke from sleep to hear the green leaves rustle or saw bright windows in a misty sky i will say i walked alone and heard none call me you will not care nor ask me why these are the notes whereof my life makes music these are the hurrying notes of pain that whirl like windy papers under street lamps blown through the spacious darkness of my brain i will say these things are trifles yet they kill me shall we rehearse our play again be patient press your palm against my heartbeats reverse my heart like an hourglass and watch the downward sifting of my minutes until the time when i must pass you shall have heard at least a poignant music and seen futility you will know better than to weep for me section two i am the one since i must now confess it who came too late and found all windows dark i am the one who sat on dew-wet benches and watched the fountain in the deserted park i am the one who walked in a grass-grown street hearing no sound save my own feet 
i saw the darkness rising like a wall i heard old stars chime out and crack and fall i turned to the east and saw it red and gray saw lovely faces blown like leaves away i heard slow waves of music lapse to silence and wished to speak yet had no word to say i am the one whom ancient spring returning with sound of leaves could not assuage i am the one who found your pity heartless yet could not rail at you nor rage you loved me once you love me now no longer must i take kindness for my daily wage section three i will say i walk involved in webs of darkness across my face feel filaments of shadows yet here you laugh and seek for you you have withdrawn your golden corded beauty shall i not somewhere find the love i knew i will say i walk at night in crowded places and search for a perfume secret in white faces and dream by night of faces seen by day or climb dark stairs and in a dark room's fragrance play such a music as pleas of rain might play the silver talons tear my heart to beauty the silver talons flash and tear petals fall to the grass and in that darkness i see you passing there smiling at me as if for one behind me smiling at death perhaps who waits behind me lifting a conscious hand to loose your hair will you not stay or if you go return my heart grows tired the music ends i will walk alone implore my veins to silence or talk of casual things with casual friends or sit on a dew-wet bench in the park recalling laughter and speech and silence and think my musings are like that quiet fountain quietly falling flung from a starless darkness flung in vain to fall in a mournful whiteness back again section four the green-leaved bough leans down above my head the pale green leaves with the lamplight on them shed twinkle on delicate stems whisper a little tremble on breathless air the green-leaved bough leans down towards its image of twinkling leaves in the water there and i am a prey to trifles of no moment caught in a snare of circumstance i laugh for a foolish laughter weep for sorrow for every whim of the music bow and dance twinkle with leaves and flow and fall with water lean with a leaning bow in arrested pain die and am born again these are the thousand things by which i seek you the atoms of dust that fall and break my brain section five say then i see too much and you too little you lean and laugh above the applauding music while i apart hear silence between the tones for you there is no falling save of petals for me apart the silences fall like stones how could we dance then to the self-same music who see so much so little i do you wrong if i reproach you call you too contented too quick to thrill to a sentimental song walk then among your tulips turn your eyes caress with a careful hand your jewelled hair discern the flashing of wings in empty skies pause for effect upon your marble stair and i will not reproach you blaming only the sinister glittering chaos of our time through which forever lonely walks with lonely the lover ridiculous the loved sublime end of section seven recording by expatriate in bangor maine part eight of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part eight episode in gray section one so to begin with dust blows down the street in lazy clouds and swirls and after that tatters of paper and straws and waves of heat and leaves plague-bitten under a tree a cat sprawls in the sapless grass and shuts his eye and sitting behind closed shutters you hear a beat of melancholy steps go slowly by see crooked rays of shadows reeling fantastic fever shapes across your ceiling and in the enormous silence that ensues you think how dusty and limp 
the green leaves hang or hear a bell shake out its hourly news in clang on languid clang and time and sky those items of our lives seem but as windle straws in the gigantic vortex of our hearts we move we change we hesitate we pause in tune with vast self-generating laws the hour predestined comes predestined it departs section two and after days of dust have swirled and gone and sparrows arch their wings in the meagre shade when the late tulips have welted on their stems and even by the pool's rim the grasses fade then after all but now perhaps too late the long-expected clouds mount up again yes we have had too long to wait there is no assuagement in the sound of rain we hear its pleasure among the leaves we hear its liquid parting from the eaves we look and in each other's eyes see lost illusions and answerless questions rise you light the lamp and with your nerveless hands thrust your gleaming needle and draw your strands of lilac through pale silk you lower your head and you are silent and for all i know you wish this time had never come that somehow it might go or even as i wish too that we were dead we are agreed and though we say no word we read each other's veins profoundly know the tedium of a tune too often heard too much rehearsed we heard it come and go we played our parts with such pathetic care i the accompaniment and you the air reversed our roles with chord and discord chiming suspension slowly to resolution climbing yet somehow through no fault of you or me drew out the affair too long only to learn our sweet musicianship could only earn a tardy kindness sad futility did you delay too long your acquiescence surrendering only when desire was dead did i persuade too long command too seldom no answer shall be said there is no need for answer for we know when we first drew together with slow steps a saying and presaging with sure eyes it was predestined so section three and now you say we cannot move apart the minutes the hours the days we wove together in a mesh of pain have bound us heart to heart we strain in a tender hatred wondering whether the hurt we do will hurt the other more or more ourselves we move in a close linked pain and stretch and feel soft anguish at the core and praise each other the while our eyes complain we should have seen the coming of this day we should have known that two such lives as ours such lives of ruined cities crumbled houses perspectives of black ruins fouled with flowers could not be brought together without probings we should have known the day must come at last when we should see the alluring present crumble among the horrible slag heaps of the past too old we were at heart and too accomplished in pause and counterpause and feigned confusion too skilfully we played too well responded too calmly saw and weighed the veiled illusion and yet for all our wisdom could not see where all was certainty no love could be we have deceived ourselves but not each other pretending love for what we could not love now in a love of ghosts we are bound together and struggle and cry and rage and cannot move section four shall we be honest then and tear apart your hands lie limp you hear rebukes and pleadings and a soft fiery tearing in your heart presages sleepless nights imagined bleedings no we have grown together every motion in laugh and look and question and reply since first we met and joined in this deception more subtly fused our brains till you and i are mere abstractions interchangeable and death to one is death to both we hate each other tenderly and well we think of partings and are nothing loath our kissings are a fanged and poisonous thing and we should strike more bitterly did we know the pain would not return and so we cling in desperate heartlessness and cannot go two perfect lovers snared in a single snare snared in a love of making love too well our music sweeps us on we know not where we are sliced with violin and stabbed with bell and cannot end what we ourselves have started mad with desire we seize and crush and tear 
only to find it is ourselves we torture playing a dissonance which we cannot bear you are not she i passionately made love to nor am i he you cunningly adored the overtones we thought we heard were echoes the lily we thrust our hands to is a sword section five after long days of dust we lie and listen to the silverly woven harmonies of rain your eyes look past me dark with pain you think how the thin leaves thrill and drip and glisten and touch my hair with your hand we should be wise the tremor of your body seems to say if like these leaves we forgot the dusty day and closed our eyes and took what passion gives without complaining that love is not our lot steadily falls the rain all night it will be raining and we shall sleep and know it not this hand that touches me is not the hand of the silver queen i dreamed of nor these lips the red lips of the cool white-hearted nereid passion comes over us with its dark eclipse section six and so to end with who shall say the end who first will break this compact you or i this much we know it must be done abruptly no soft preludic speech no sudden cry no murderously indifferent glance of eye but some day one of us grown half possessed with pain unbearable will walk away into the emptiness of time he came from saying no word since there's no word to say end of part eight recording by expatriate in bangor maine part nine of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part nine innocence the little leaves that climbed so high are blown down headlong from the sky they are pelted and torn by dreamless rain they that had dreams but got no gain out of the west a wind comes calling and they whirl earthward giddily falling into the dull dust whence they rose to bear this rain and wait for snows they follow with wind and dance a little the red turns brown the green goes brittle they eddy with dust the wind comes chill and then at the last they all lie still even the leaf that climbed so high that it reached among stars was part of the sky lie quiet earth and slumber deep once more we come with you to sleep section one by candlelight he read till late a wild wind creaked the garden gate and when at last he closed his book and ran the curtain up to look at the sinister sky against the pane came sharp the first few drops of rain and a lightning flame cleft hard the night lighting the trees with swift blue light was youth not lightning flame like this and would not striking so be bliss the raindrops paused then faster fell the murmur of raindrops seemed to swell filling the dark with unseen grief falling on roof and bough and leaf while lightning stabs ran ceaselessly out of the darkness into the sea he heard the night wind gustily roar among the trees along the shore sullen and slow in lull of squall he heard the short waves rush and fall and nearer at hand the patter on leaves and the heartless drip of drops from eaves these minute drops it seemed they meant that youth went as the minutes went falling forever as all things must into the grey and dreamless dust why was he not at sea out there fighting the wildness in this air would he be always chained to soil condemned year after year to toil with hoe and harrow seed and plough this hand that held this candle now must wither and pass among these meadows he turned the flame a riot of shadows flew round the walls and he knew then that he must go live laugh with men with men who rode through nights like this for a paltry flag or a woman's kiss he puffed the flame out threw it by and listened quiet while the sky blazed white with lightning one brief space and trees and sea leapt towards his face blackness came back the room was still he opened the window over the sill into the tumult of the storm he stepped 
and felt the raindrops warm on face and shoulders teeming thick while lightnings glimmered quiet and quick at the garden gate he paused looked back saw all the cottage windows black then facing slants of gusty rain and breathing salt air keen as pain went forth a man to meet his earth with a young and hard and savage mirth along the beach a mile to town he ran with dripping face bent down the drops came thick he scarce could breathe he heard them whisper and hiss and seethe on the flattened blackness of this sea that washed up towards him mournfully to-night for the first time life was sweet these waves that whitely round his feet spread sly and sibilant like pale hands reaching in darkness over the sands these were his old days yearning still to lure him down to dark and kill and speeding through them tireless strong his young heart burst with a triumph song he fled like fire he was free at last he rose like a swift wind from his past o oh, youth of laughter youth of fire youth tremulous with bright desire welcoming sun laughing at rain making a brightness out of pain weaving of dreams a lovely earth with heart of sunlight soul of mirth speed to the sun to that great blaze to light therein your glorious days by the old stone bridge he met a van and there at last his life began a smoky lantern gleamed behind he shouted ran toward it blind and a dark-eyed girl leaned out to him her lovely young face shadowed dim she bade him in to shelter there and talking with him combed her hair while rain whirred on the canvas roof and they heard the tramp and splash of hoof as far as the second town she said the van would go she shook her head making the black hair flow and fall and tossed it back while sweet and small her mischievous face looked out through it like a hidden fire most exquisite and seeing her eyes burn through that dark each like a golden blowing spark his hands grew hot his young heart beat he thought this woman was strangely sweet a dangerous red flame fierce in smoke and his young voice trembled when he spoke meanwhile his eyes with hungry stare fed at the miracle of her hair and her white hand that moved so slow combing the long hair to and fro drew to a rhythmical delight his young blood innocent till that night behind her head a lantern hung a small red flame wherefrom were flung goblin shadows to spin and sprawl on canvas roof and canvas wall and while she combed these shadows went dizzily silently blurred and blent came out shrank back and swiftly fled at lift of her arm or toss of head she laughed to watch his bashful stare had he seen no woman comb her hair she drew it out and coiled it then to heap up on her head again between her lips she held each pin till place was found to push it in yet holding them could every while manage in spite of them to smile and when she smiled her sweetness came through all his flesh like gusty flame rich dissolution sharp and sweet making his full heart pause to beat before it hurried to keep in time with measured rain a delicate chime backward it seemed on all his days she shed from her heart a windy blaze and all that once had pained him so somehow in that bewitching glow grew beautiful and far and strange he felt his buried childhood change and blossom in him and grow fair as if it fed on magic air and all his grey fields seemed once more gardens by an enchanted shore where dew-wet daisies gleamed in sun and earth seemed always just begun just risen with a laughing face from the great fount of stars in space life was a many music dream a mystic woof of dust and gleam and on these musics came and went visions out of the darkness sent faces and voices merged in one cool green earth and blazing sun were he and she and all their world only a golden dust mote world in a shaft of fire that fell between two darknesses a moment seen time caught him up and fled with him his childhood whirled away grew dim and she being gypsy took his palm to peer therein for good or harm in changing light with changing eyes 
and virgin brow grown sagely wise love of glory was here foretold glory his hands would never hold his life was little and bright and brief soon to be withered like a leaf he laughed but let his hand lie there feeling against his cheek her hair so soft and when she stirred her head it touched withdrew and touched and spread a luxury like blossoming smouldering rose and flashing wing through all his heart and down his veins over the seething of these rains golden horns in his blood were blown prolonged and sweet in golden tone faint and clear a far-off laughter sinister deep and sad and after a silence came in which rain fell in which he heard her slowly tell of youth more fleeting bright than breath love unfulfilled and life and death what meant she these were word and word not life not dream her voice he heard and that was like a music flowing smooth as fire sweetly slowing subtle persuasive a command upon his heart and still his hand lay in her hand and still she sought his web therein with puzzled thought he smiled and did she then believe a destiny these lines could weave to hide such portent of disaster no of his own life he was master although she called him evil starred after a lightning flash came hard the rush of rain along the roof drowning the tramp and splash of hoof smiling serene she dropped his palm and touched her hair again and calm with half averted musing face one elbow raised in conscious grace and vague deep-seeing darkened eyes like starless space in starred blue skies fed at his soul until it seemed that in those depths he shrank and dreamed was of her life some tiny part which had flowed upward from her heart and pondering on her living face her eyes half closed he thought a space that life ere this he never knew only this time this place were true only this moment was abiding all else illusion swiftly gliding or were these eyes a dream but no naught could be life more truly so and mirrored in him as in a glass this lovely face would never pass the van was jolting into town and into the darkness he jumped down a smoky lantern gleamed behind the rain came thick it beat him blind and a dark-eyed girl leaned out to him her lovely young face shadowed dim good night her words were lost in rain he peered but could not see her plain only a hand through lamplight came which touching his hand thrilled like flame and dark starred eyes and shadowy cheek so smote him he could hardly speak good night her words were lost in rain and in his heart great bells of pain opened and beat and fell and beat while dark he ran with eyeless feet section two rain on the roof above him drummed soft rain through all his pulses hummed water returning to the sea out of the night's immensity how often had this rain been heard and he had understood no word but now like music's own self weaving delicate measures past conceiving with sibilant whisper windy whirr it talked of her it sang of her mimicked her laughter feigned her speech till through the night he yearned to reach and find if in impalpable air his fingers might not touch her hair this girl was sweet he had not known a soul could be so rose-like blown outside his window by the eaves murmurous glib he heard the leaves drinking the raindrops gleefully in green and secret revelry strange through all his life till now watching the soil and the slow plough that tore the matted roots apart he had not dreamed that earth's deep heart in slowly sunward yearning bliss could send up such a rose as this the soil was sweet that did such things this clod had sent up sunlit wings he closed his eyes and in that place summoned the cool light of her face and her cool hand beneath his own and her low voice's silver tone sweeter than music was this voice sweet as when violins rejoice in complex mood to single time and delicate concords fall and climb there was a plangent tremble there which troubled sweet the spirit's ear yet was it true what she had said 
and were the stars so easily read and could his life be swayed afar by malign lustre of some star no this was dreaming young and strong he would fashion all his days to song and walk in sunlight with sure feet the rain hurried the warm rain beat through his veins in gusts it went in listening dark he thought it meant music bearing among earth's roots dreams of blossoms and of fruits petals conceiving in darkling sod by which the soil might look on god between his eyelids vague shapes gleamed a light sleep fell he turned and dreamed in sinister dusk by sea they walked on weeded shingle sat and talked a light wind whirled her soft white dress it tossed her hair her loveliness blew over him like gusts of fire dizzying him with mute desire the surf lunged hissing at their feet and laughing upward to him sweet in mock of fear she drew away from a sliding foam sheet gleaming gray the sun broke free from clouds of space warming the youngness of her face across gray leagues of hurrying sea he shot pale fire then ominously dipped whirling into the rack again and night fell swiftly scattering rain she laughed put out her hand to rise letting her dark eyes seek his eyes and for a moment so stood still and suddenly then youth had his will he kissed her mouth she leaned to him rain and the sea grew far and dim he only knew he touched her face they two alone in time and space he kissed her small sweet shutting eyes and felt her young breast quiver and rise soft on his cheek her soft hair blew seagulls above them cried and flew and over the cliffs came faintly down three bell notes from the wind-blown town chaos of tone the bell notes came flaring within his heart like flame clashed and mingled and pulsed and roared molten upon him fused and poured opened and beat and fell and beat while dark he ran with eyeless feet he woke faint tremble of a bell sang in his eyes the rain still fell and rising in the darkness there it seemed he felt her windy hair cool on his eyes and still it seemed he kissed this mouth more real than dreamed fantastic fires within him blent and into the rain half dazed he went dropped down the path that led to sea and through the darkness passionately sought for the whiteness of her dress her glimmering phantom loveliness this was the place or was it this he heard on the sea the slow rain hiss she was not here a dream no more he watched the pale surf charge the shore watched the wild combers plunge and sprawl and helpless shingle rolling crawl giddily down the undertow into this great sea he would go and fight these savage waves a space a song of praise for her young face he watched his chance and stooped and dove darkness above him whelmed and drove he fought three huge waves crushed him down he felt that he must breathe or drown her face went past him days and nights he caught at a whirl of blinding lights black depths beneath him burst in moons bells in the water beat in swoons he swallowed fire he strangled flame then darkness and a swift dream came he walked with loud steps on hard sand bright seas foamed up on either hand hissing a threat of death to him before him far and fading dim a green treed world lay low and sweet towards which he moved his tired feet among the tall trees lights came out someone was running he heard a shout and a face that he had loved somewhere leaned out beneath a lantern there she smiled he reached his hands to her darkness came down he heard wings whirr a sudden music intense and sweet broke in the air and vanished fleet he hurried he felt a creeping dread hurried and dared not turn his head he walked with loud steps on hard sand bright seas foamed up on either hand he felt their cold and sparkling breath exhale upon him a wind of death the low green shore grew vague and far one light remained or was it star and now the darkness drank this down he saw no more of shore or town only this tongue of hard wet sand and black waves foaming on either hand where was the earth it could not be that everything was sunk in sea 
along this darkening shore he drove a monstrous plough the bright share clove a rich brown loam a fruitful earth he flung fine seed and a flame of mirth a fire of roses white and red wavered and shot behind his tread shone and glistened and fanned and gleamed with time these seas could be redeemed but darkness again destroyed it all the vast low sky began to fall a blackness sagged upon his brain crushed in a blood-red cloud of pain flattened him down on hard cold sand while bright seas rushed on either hand remote within him a sweet voice spoke something was lost rich music broke the two seas rose and gleamed to meet hissed over sand made sea complete they roared together they drowned the world a ghostly vapour above them whirled drifted away blew off blew far leaving a darkness without star was it the world or was it he that blew away so peacefully section three the waves hurried the long seas flowed out of the night in hosts they rode seething and sinister and swift each in its destined place to lift a darkening crest against pale sky glimmer unfurl and dazzle high in a shatter of foam along this shore withdrawing slow with solemn roar who shall declare where they began all night from west to east they ran all night a terrible music sung unwearying on the cliffs they flung rose and beat to fall in beating grayly and endlessly repeating who shall declare what hurt they did what murder among the rocks they hid cruel and beautiful they came and offered without pride or shame the naked body gashed and white of him who wooed the stars that night end of part nine recording by expatriate in bangor maine part ten of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part ten dust in starlight earth triumphant part three strange music filled his ears that night the wind blew long in ceaseless white the soft snow ticked his window-pane and turned to sleet and turned to rain and all night long he listened there to the wild merriment in the air and thought it strange that there should be such fury-driven night while he lay in an anguish stretched and torn eyes wide with pain unclosed forlorn moveless upon his narrow bed tense fingers clenched beneath his head the snow upon the sill piled dim did not this storm rise out of him and then the sleet in gusty flaws pattered the panes and in each pause he heard his heart slow tortured beating wearily through the veins repeating pain and pleasure pain and pleasure life's simple senseless tireless measure snow turned to sleet sleet turned to rain he lived his whole life through again and while the tortured elm boughs moved against the eaves once more he loved this woman she the golden-haired for whom first love had been declared he closed his eyes closed out the storm the air came fragrant stealing warm pregnant with lilac shaking sweet their purple crowns along the street while he his young soul turbulent under the stars through dark streets went filled with a subtle fiery mirth conscious of all the moving earth the flagstones ringing sweet and hard the shadowy river mooned and starred the lovely lamp-lit maple trees luminous green where through the breeze softly rustled twinkling leaves and moving the shadows under the eaves the church bells pealed a languid eight he quickened pace lest he be late music from all the dark earth came the whole world seemed to bloom with flame and his young body ran like song while rapidly he walked along remote the bell rang faint and fleet with his own heart the vast night beat and then behind the glass door she far lovelier than a dream could be 
with smiling lips and grave shy eyes so beautiful so warm so wise came subtly timid subtly proud making his pulses push and crowd and clamour and cry while with slow hands smiling she drew the latch to stand against the wall whole leagues away shrinking and sweet no word to say snow turned to sleet sleet turned to rain why must he give himself such pain why hark back now to what was dead he clenched moist hands beneath his head and then in sudden agony relaxed in sudden misery turned on his face let fall the years and eased his heart with birth of tears why if he no more loved her now was it such torment thinking how she smiled or spoke in years gone by why think how he had made her cry this time or that with cruel word sharp through the years her sob he heard slight as a breath a terrible thing and saw her hands repel and cling and fugitive her eyes dark blue brim bright with sudden tears wherethrough she looked from infinite distances beseeching gaze fixed deep on his then sentences that broken came dissolving him in flaming shame if he had loved her so much then could he not love her so again her mouth seemed sweet to him a space the childish sweetness of her face her soft gold hair and thinking this his throat filled and he yearned to kiss this face that he had loved and so listening to the tick of snow and all the silence else that lay through all the house he groped his way to the dark windy fragrant room now strange to him and in that gloom stood motionless beside her bed she slept one arm above her head and strangely tired this young face seemed and sad as if some grief she dreamed he stooped and kissed her forehead then and seemed to live dead love again with troubled heart and once more went not knowing well what these things meant to his own room to lie and stare through the black turmoil of the air while snow turned sleet and sleet turned rain and through his heart and through his brain wild storm went whirling mad carouse tearing at roofs and breaking boughs and strewing with havoc all the earth a terrible and a grievous mirth dawn came pale twilight over snows he could not sleep and so he rose and dressed unconsciously and crept past the dark room where still she slept and down the stairs and through the hall he would put end now to it all put end not die he did not mean well why not die the snow unseen spread white around him muffling thick eyes down he strode his pace grew quick down the long silence of the hill to the black stream unfrozen stilled swollen it was black eddies coiled overhid rocks it smoothly boiled silent intent resistless slow he stood at gaze he did not know by these words he had not meant death he blew a long bright frosty breath and watched it fade the sun broke free misty and red and on a tree a crow cawed harshly balancing with awkward jerk of tail and wing sooner than deal her so much pain would he not die and then again he saw her face go white with grief and heard the in-caught sob and brief felt the breath quiver and sharply break and saw her eyelids twitch to take the gathering tears unseen away while open mouth grew racked and grey poor broken sweet bewildered thing he felt her fingers twist and cling and pitied her ah pitied her and pitying felt affection stir affection where there once was love his heart felt pain but did not move the sun burst haze and shining bright set far white distances alight flashing on tree and snow-sheathed wire an icicle and set afire remote ethereal fir-topped hills dazzling on little snow-fed rills and under this the city lay soft harmony of gold and grey drowsy and vague he would go there life must be lived he did not care not care a pang swept up in him a space the bright world seemed to swim caught in regrets for things gone past strange lovely things that could not last 
and it was pain at length to go from one whom he had once loved so from one who loved him so much still he turned and slowly climbed the hill deliberate with measured pace and downward pondering sightless face and gained the top and looking back over the slope where lay his track resolved to write not see her more then in his heart shut sharp that door days passed strange colourless quiet days silent and deep he went his ways pleased with himself at having will to live his life and yet so still so strangely laughterless these days went they filled him with queer discontent his ears craved speech to listen to his hands craved touch of hands they knew his eyes what yearning glimmered there yearning for what eyes and what hair strange turn of things even in work these hollow silences came to lurk a queer starvation soft and slow caressingly his hands would go over smooth surfaces of things seeming to feel them soft as wings and little phrases she had said recurred like music in his head persistent habit that was it his pain was sweet was exquisite exquisite most because of knowing that all this loveliness was going a passing thing a fading thing which never again the years could bring silence came soft upon the air deep silence that he could not bear dropping between pace and pace infinite loneliness of space dropping between tick and chime infinite loneliness of time and between word and seldom word abysmal nothingness was heard unbearable a thing not known he must be blunt make life his own shatter the solitude with cries shut out the appalling peace of skies roof out the stars hear music playing and hear what every one was saying drink down their words like subtlest wine and laughter making faces shine along the river in curving row the evening lights began to glow over the bridges grey and vast the luminous long trains glided past from crowded houses came the people the huge moon rose behind a steeple and in the deepening western sky now one by one and cold and high the winter stars came out to stare pitiless down through frozen air he walked alone through azure shadows looked longingly through lighted windows and past the moving picture doors through crowds of loungers pimps and whores why not go in faint music came around him like a gust of flame dissolving him with promises of warmth and lights and ecstasies of hope that in the theatre dim some woman might sit next to him with half-seen face in shadow sweet humming or beating time with feet his ticket bought he hastened in hearing the wail of violin and down the black aisle stumbled blind straining his unused eyes to find an empty seat while overhead the long bright shaft of light was shed pouring and whirring weaving rays intense white stream where in a maze of fiery motes whirled up and rose and dived and swarmed a seat he chose and sat and watched the vivid screen rapidly ever-changing scene while music subtly tuned thereto sang and cried and minutes flew to violin and horn and drum and yet through all these things would come a strange and aching loneliness a yearning for some loveliness for touch of hands for touch of hair soft flesh to stroke beside him there no woman came no girl and he sat mute in lonely misery and wondered if a woman came if he could speak or whether shame would silence him or maybe fear but still none came the end drew near he rose a vague unhappiness came over him a restlessness where turn beneath cold stars he stood perplexed in dark uncertain mood while laughing people jostled by and voices lifted words were high and street lights glared on healthy faces a foolish mirth he longed for places where there was hush and dark and peace the moon swam coldly without cease along the echoing river wall he heard the short waves slap and fall quarrel and splash gurgle and fill and here he walked where night was still save for the waters where alone his loud steps rang on freezing stone 
while silent swift before him ran shadow grotesquely like a man flown long and thin to wheel in fright at nearness to another light and flee behind its master kept between it and the light he stepped quickly with this for company through light cold wind and quietly pondered the meaning of these days was he not free to go his ways was he not free pain swelled his heart he struck the mood and tore apart pale sentiment no more grown stern to his own rooms he made return drinking the sharp air icily with vague belief it made him free he stumbled in the unknown gloom and sought a match somehow this room seemed silent empty strangely cold a hollow place a place unsold a loose board creaked beneath his tread the darkness listened in his bed coldly upon him slimy cold sluggishly fold on quiet fold it seemed to him the silence crept to make it sure he never slept and all the long night through it seemed he knew not if he waked or dreamed as if some person loved had died he lay and stared grey-lipped wide-eyed winter seemed breaking up at last with winter would this pain be past across the river a warm wind blew and strange and secret joy he knew an inward creeping pangful thing which made cold memory wake and sing he had felt wind like this with her when they walked hills through pines and fir o oh, times of youth he saw her now reach sunlit hand to break a bough which then release sprang back again would sun shine brightly soon as then dark clouds rushed suddenly up the sky devouring all blue heaven's eye the wind grew fitful thrusting chill the sun went dim and slow and still hovering and reluctant fell a few soft snowflakes to foretell snow falling through the muted night drifting the streets with silent white steadily falling whirling blowing so in his mind now it was snowing silent persistent whelming deep a much-loved world in frozen sleep burying it eternally he worked to lose this agony till chancing in his desk to find a letter long since out of mind from her one sent two years ago he turned it angry did not know if he had strength to read it through then suddenly tore it twice in two and burned the pieces every one the small words she had breathed upon and seeing it shrink in eager flame took subtle pleasure shot with shame a loneliness like silent night came round him cold came round him white and all sounds grew remote therein voices he knew fled far and thin slowly familiar things withdrew beyond the little earth he knew and in this hush grown still and strange with quiet breath he watched this change slowly and deeply touch his life was this the absence of his wife mere madness then companionship meant the lips need for meeting lip of hand for hand and limb for limb this woman's flesh had wearied him why not have new had she some hold no there was none his heart lay cold from the high window he looked down on huddled roofs the snow-white town the steam clouds blowing sprawling sliding fleet shadows underneath them gliding strange what a tangle life became as one grew old and what a shame that childhood's sweet simplicity should stagnate in such shape as he could that sweet freshness be renewed he mused in disillusioned mood and in his musing backward went out of this day of discontent to a merry world of leafy boughs where orioles were keeping house and brown bees tumbling in the clover and sunshine on sweet grass where over feeling it prickly warm he stole intent to find a locust hole a fountain in a garden pool shot a slim shaft and spattered cool and on this ever-changing shaft a quivering white ball danced and laughed he called to mind how one night late they came home through the garden gate and all the garden brimmed and spilled with moonlight silver-gray that filled the paths and lawns and on the wall where windy vine leaves seemed to crawl cast blue mysterious stencilings filling his heart with elvish things 
were those things lost that rain that sun and would he no more laugh and run when a hurdy-gurdy filled the street with vibrant music sharply sweet his mother too he saw her now soft eyes her wise and tranquil brow her mouth so sweet so warm so sure her hands so gentle so secure he would not see that face again nor feel its softness soft as rain why did these things come back to him what music in him flowing dim disturbed these long dead melodies these chords of muffled ecstasies what soft hands stroked these sleeping things filling the darkness as with wings with ghostly laughter ghostly tears now poignant through the lapse of years a music sweet to listen to and vaguely now it seemed he knew whence came this quiet loveliness suffusing all his loneliness weary at length of dust of earth grown too familiar that young mirth seemed doubly sweet desirable and those illusions credible to such young heart to such brave eyes lost in the wonder of those skies illusions lost could he no more build castles on infinity's shore then softly through these musings rose like warm air bringing pain to snows subtle belief dissolving warm slowly and painfully taking form that with his dying love for her had died these dreams she set astir and now these dreams were turned to dust all his illusions turned to lust the world flew small remote and dim shrilling thin music faint to him the hostile sun withdrew afar compelling with it moon and star all the great seas of light that run flowing and falling from the sun the tides of life majestic vast invisibly receded past in darkness down with murmurous roar as seas withdraw down shingle shore into a night turned fathomless so silent cold and rhythmless desolate bleak in wind he stood questioning freezing solitude searching the darkness with dark face hearing his heart through empty space with tired beating with tortured beating wearily through his veins repeating pain and pleasure pain and pleasure life's simple senseless stubborn measure there was no star there was no stone which he could touch and call his own there was no tree no grass no place that knew his touch and no warm face which might towards him turn and fire should he go near with dumb desire o oh, earth who sent this soul so straying o oh, earth triumphant earth betraying luring aside with music sweet these all too swift too eager feet what recompense the night came deep upon his heart dropped barren sleep soundless and songless never stirring time and identical time recurring cold and slow cold and slow whelming his small heart deep in snow bewildered lost a child again mutely enduring strangest pain beyond all knowledge or all cry strange pain inflicted by strange sky where lift his hands to where now reach where fling his body where beseech silence interminable vast over his heart its shadows cast he lay outstretched a bleeding thing when lo remote began to sing a little voice soft hardly heard faint and remote the darkness stirred wings were beating shadows lifting stars through clouds flew wildly drifting went dark again again shone through effulgent in a rent of blue and slow seductive music came softly upon him soft as flame caressing him dissolving him the world in moonlight seemed to swim the light poured down like waters rose over him drowning seemed to close turbulent rushing roaring singing sweeping him helpless wildly clinging catching in vain at star and moon while all his senses seemed to swoon huge bells upon his body rang clang upon liberating clang the whole world cracked and opened up spilling its splendour like a cup the sun stood still beneath his feet behold security was sweet o oh, laughter of the living earth o oh, greenly springing time of mirth fire through all earth's bosom ran in concord with the mood of man 
and upward moved in luminous green to the dreamed of sun for ages seen the moonlight poured her silver down on waiting furrows dreaming brown was he not furrow ploughed like these now drinking deep of april's ease drinking of rains and drinking sun for nurture of new youth just begun he grew in stature touched the sky commanded with imperious eye all earth and heaven now so young with april's fires within him sung was not first love forgotten dead the little phrases she had said once more in darkness now recurred clearly and sweetly word by word and left him cold he yawned and smiled yes she was after all a child sweet because childish briefly sweet an april sunlight flashing fleet she had been sweet to touch to kiss but once forgotten would he miss under the eaves the bare boughs moved scraping the wall this girl once loved he loved no more and now he sent out of his heart to banishment this face these eyes this golden hair and lying dark in comfort there it seemed he put down tenderly her hands that clung beseechingly to hold his heart freed one by one finger from finger put them down and pondering on this painful thing felt pleasure through his pulses sting the long days opened full and sweet music through all their hours beat the sun waxed warm the trees flashed green the birds sang loud the boughs between their songs were in his own heart sung and all the earth seemed once more young his loneliness was it not need of flesh for flesh so once more freed he took a girl to walk with him one twilight by the river dim the lustrous flow beneath them spread where lamps threw green and lamps threw red and all along the shadowy walk the lovers came to laugh and talk to lean upon the parapet against the river in silhouette discussing sweet in lowest tone the moon until that night unknown which burned behind the chimney-pots and filled with magic vacant lots along the stones they scuffed their feet loitering much for life was sweet to count the stars above the steeple and search the eyes of all the people to laugh at dresses out of fashion or some too frank display of passion he paused to light a cigarette she said how glad she was they'd met watching with wistful eyes the flame that warmly lit his hands her name it hardly mattered though was may the name was common out her way he took her arm they strolled along while bargemen sang a smutty song and one by one remotely then the church bells pealed the hour of ten pretty the river was at night when all the lanterns were alight her arm beneath his thumb was warm desire in him took eager form the blood rose blossoming to his brain he gripped her hand to point of pain yes it was pretty like romance their eyes met in a furtive glance and could not look away but burned into each other's soul and yearned shameless and large for flesh now sweet and the pulses beat confused with beat they stood so silent swaying slightly smile meeting intimate smile then lightly time to go home and while she talked along more luminous streets they walked affecting an airiness of tone far from the blood's intense sweet drone and a light laughter smooth and sweet mantling the heart's terrific beat his hand beneath her elbow pressed feeling the softness of her breast her breast now his he could not speak he leaned to her grown faintly weak his lips grew dry and suddenly came sharp realization of his shame torrents of memories filled his brain clouding the flesh's bliss with pain whirling his thoughts out like a wind was it betrayal had he sinned tumult ensued he felt her arm under his hand so living warm and feeling this he closed his eyes forbade those troubling dreams to rise and suddenly laughed more swiftly walking listened intently started talking and squeezed her hand for answer came a smile indulgent free from shame a smile that stripped her body bare let down her golden laddered hair within her room she stood a space to doff her hat then raised her face drowsy to kiss 
with half shut eyes and clung he felt her full breast rise quivering soft beneath his breast body to aching body pressed knee sought for knee to fuse with it mouth upon mouth fed exquisite fierce hand caught shoulder yielding waist flesh drank of flesh to pain embraced slowly ecstatically moving greedy of every second's loving till weakening with the ultimate kiss she opened soft her mouth to his torrential flesh the darkness fell far off ran reelings of a bell round the sky then all was still save for vague steps that climbed a hill that climbed and climbed drew ever near came up grew swift swelled loud and clear brought rush of winds confusing roar huge waters upon a sandy shore reverberating falling beating withdrawing rhythmical repeating filling the night the seas the air rising and falling everywhere withdrawal slow succeeding rush clamour and hush clamour and hush vast bells upon his body rang clang upon liberating clang the whole world cracked and opened up and spilled its splendour like a cup o oh, darkness drenching all things deep profound impenetrable sleep falling so sweetly and so slowly to make even dust in starlight holy falling at last on time and space o oh, darkness loveliest of face bringing intense and wearied light secure at last to restful night bringing to cool peace the sun's heat whose feverish golden hammers beat all day long on stubborn soil and stubborn bough in fruitful toil all the fierce youth light wearied so in pouring life in aching flow now came this darkness softly down together bliss and pain to drown in soundless perfectly pouring stream dark lustrous flood unflecked by dream remote the world in whispers flew remote the stars and moon withdrew the tides moved slowly sleepily the weary blood moved sluggishly while heart asleep went ever beating wearily through the veins repeating pain and pleasure pain and pleasure life's simple senseless tireless measure forgetfulness forgetfulness came down upon all weariness suffusing warm and sure and slow the blood's alternate pause and flow profound impenetrable death laid hush on all save gentle breath o fevered world could you but keep forever so this dreamless sleep bells pealed night passed the hours rushed on dawn came then day then night then dawn a strangely tranquil thing was earth clear light unsmiling without mirth through the young grass in the bright air tranquillity hung everywhere a calm a slow deliberate thing bewitching even the bravest wing he peered he could not understand but walked as in an unknown land the leaves hung motionless in sky water enchanted seemed to lie the faint waves fell asleep half shaped the breeze to nothingness escaped all earth as touched by wind of death seemed holding in suspense her breath stirless dreamless soulless still a slumber of arrested will who would dare break this silence now whose hand would shake this dreaming bough set trembling all these leaves once more or urge the ripples up the shore tranquillity was all reply the answerless calmness of the sky and turning from its senseless stare he saw his shadow crouching there a shadow ominous ugly deep even as he looked it seemed to creep stealthily close he turned away and suddenly all the grass seemed grey listless he touched piano keys the long unpractised melodies came broken from his fingers stirred vague hints of colour sound and word a world that he had lost somewhere a world where sunshine filled the air it was not sad but pleasant so to call to mind things long ago this simple childlike little tune meant roses on a night in june in a cool shadowy bowl they lay a fragrant leafy disarray whole-hearted opulence of bloom glowing and musical in the gloom oh golden hearts he saw them yet glistening widely open wet whose careful hands had put them there 
who with blue eyes and golden hair the simple notes like water dropped asked a sweet question laughed and stopped this harsher thing what did it mean this was remoter dimly seen school days a winter evening coming white glistening night the wild blood humming a run through drifts in shadowy places then lights and warmth and well-known faces something sinister here though most was warmly colored still a ghost he marred a chord and stopped yet fingered and tapped stray keys a long time lingered on certain minor tones that beat into his soul seductive sweet twilight had come in dark he played being obscurely now afraid to rise from shadow turn on light and so disclose an empty night how queerly hard now to believe that this was not a winter's eve he stood by the window looking far over black roofs to one large star and felt great clouds of darkness rise under horizon of those skies silent and swift a baleful dream soon to devour that one star's gleam pregnant with lightnings these clouds were a light wind set the leaves astir uneasily in puffs they showed pale undersides along the road under the arc lights dust was whirling in sinister little spirals twirling the night was ominous with threat he slept and yet could not forget in sleep how sudden storm came down over the silence of the town he heard the first slow drops of rain patter upon a far-off pane and pause a moment and repeat and hurry in unison then to beat a multitudinous rhythm there steady exhaustless like despair what gave such talons to this rain he lived his whole life through again that night two months ago recalling when snow and sleet were all night falling when storm whirled up from all his life being tired at last of her his wife it seemed again he suffered there and heard the elm boughs creaking bare scraping the eaves in agony tossed by relentless wind while he lay in an anguish stretched and torn eyes wide with pain unclosed forlorn had he then once so deeply loved this woman now so far removed he closed his eyes closed out the storm the air came fragrant stealing warm pregnant with lilacs shaking sweet their purple crowns along the street while he his young soul turbulent under the stars through dark streets went the church bells pealed a languid eight he quickened pace lest he be late and then behind the glass door she far lovelier than a dream could be with smiling lips and grave shy eyes so beautiful so warm so wise came subtly timid subtly proud making his pulses push and crowd and clamour and cry while with slow hands smiling she drew the latch to stand against the wall whole leagues away shrinking and sweet no word to say cold came the talons of this rain why must he give himself such pain why hark back now to what was dead lost was the magic of that head forever lost with youth and all bright dreams that fall when youth must fall was he not now of all this free the specious glamour witchery contented now with humble dust forswearing love espousing lust this woman by the river then he saw her drowsy face again had she not wholly satisfied had lust not found its perfect bride the pulses murmurous through his veins bear multitudinous tread of rains unhappy ceaseless melodies tireless tireless threnodies was something lost some lovely thing flash of blossom whir of wing hover of dream the sun that lies perpetual myth in childhood's eyes was this worth having could he go back to that world he did not know but thought again how he had crept through the dark house to where she slept with one arm lying above her there amid her lustrous spread of hair and how the sweetness of her face had caught his heart a breathing space and how he kissed her then and went not knowing well what these things meant to his own room again to lie and stretched in tortured misery so she would sleep when she was dead dishevelled pale swift through his head came words and phrases she had spoken huddled and breathless halting broken 
disturbing music word by word the well-known phrases he had heard day after day so many years till in his wide eyes warm crept tears could he go back to her once more and all the young bright world she wore that world of luminous rain and sun all of whose brightness now was done and if he loved her now could she bring back life's lost simplicity through all his blood flew gusts of rain and suddenly now it all seemed plain it was his soul's returning need for her from whom he thought it free that drove him forth two nights ago to love a girl he did not know and now his whole soul turned again to her whom he had dealt such pain why if he loved her no more now was it such torment thinking how she smiled or spoke in years gone by why think how he had made her cry this time or that with callous word sharp through the years her sob he heard slight as a breath a terrible thing and saw her hands repel and cling and fugitive her eyes dark blue brim bright with sudden tears where through she looked from infinite distances beseeching gaze fixed deep on his then sentences that broken came dissolving him in flaming shame could he not now arise from lust nobler than dust arise from dust in all this intervening space how had she been with frightened face he watched the darkness quivering still had she been well had she been ill and suddenly mute went up the cry o oh god if somehow she should die o oh god what dream and stiff with pain he felt the pattering of this rain cold on his heart a taloned thing tireless ceaseless maddening while through it all he dreamed that she lay dead for all eternity dishevelled pale unbreathing cold soon to be buried under mould all her young laughter her sweet mirth covered deep in soft brown earth oh utterly desirable oh pain so unendurable to think that she had died alone there in her room and never known through all these days before she died that still through all his heart had cried unceasingly for her though he being young and foolish ceaselessly refused to hear it turned away and walked through sorrow day by day this rain did it not fall to-night above her body's hidden white stealing through all that darkness down to damp her hair and stain with brown her small soft eyelids fast shut now and the white wisdom of her brow o oh, earth that you should humble deep such rose as this in endless sleep and suddenly then released of weight he knew her living and elate caught sharp his heart on verge of laughter drew a deep tranquil breath and after being dropped in quiet misery relaxed in sudden agony turned on his face let fall the years and eased his heart with birth of tears o oh, foolish blind courageous youth he knew at last the secret truth confusion came this little tune meant roses on a night in june in a cool shadowy bowl they lay a fragrant green leaved disarray whose careful hands had put them there who with blue eyes and golden hair o oh, glowing hearts he saw them yet glistening widely open wet a fountain in a garden pool shot a slim shaft and spattered cool and on this ever-changing shaft a wonderful white ball danced and laughed illusions lost could he no more build castles on infinity's shore sleep stole upon him as he smiled and in his dreams he ran a child outside his room a robin sang sun to his heart shot gleaming pang and now the grass lay cool and sweet and glistening for his early feet the sunlight on his eyes was warm dearer it was for last night's storm hazily on the town it lay shimmering gold on softest gray while joyously he walked along feeling the deep world shake with song his heart like early morning earth bloomed fragrant now with strange new birth lilac hedge and willow tree trembled within with fiery glee feeling the music of this sun through leaf and blossom subtly run laughter rose upward in him light the spiders busy through the night had spun grey webs on hedge and lawn o oh, lovely world revealed by dawn 
his heart beat rapidly he went through this bright world with wonderment feeling a softness in this air a tenderness to heal despair soft light like broken waters falling song of birds low voices calling music bubbling from deep springs and flash of sun on dewy wings swiftly he went familiar places lifted serene and joyous faces this tree he knew this hedge this stone through his own heart these leaves had grown sweetly these things now spoke of her they gave him news they set a stir with gleams and perfumes faintly whirled a dim a half-forgotten world came she not forth in these things so to meet her lover let him know that she was now as always his his heart brimmed up with melodies he climbed the hill with pang of fear lest somehow she should not be here there was her window open wide someone was moving there inside trying to call his voice twice broke before the simple name he spoke and then she came o oh, wind of spring making his pulses pour and sing and clamour and cry while with slow hand doubting she drew the latch to stand shrinking and sweet no blame to say against the wall whole leagues away she with blue eyes the golden-haired from whom first love had been declared her hair her eyes so sweet these were that hushed and longed he looked at her nor understood how he had done such hurt such cruelty to one so beautiful so warm so wise so luminous with light of skies pain swelled his heart the past was dead he kissed her twice with no word said this love it seemed was free of lust rose winged and singing out of dust o world be ever dark with rain or be forever mute with pain to these once more was sunlight given they walked on earth and thought it heaven thus dust and starlight had its dream thinking to hold to some faint beam of far-off holier higher things be born from dust by dream of wings end of part ten recording by expatriate in bangor maine end of nocturne of remembered spring and other poems by conrad aiken